Hello there. Welcome to my leather shop. My name is George Hurst. In this program, we will teach how to make a quick draw holster, much like those used by single action shooters. The pattern provided to accompany this video is sized for single action guns that are the most popular with today's shooters. Since this is a rather loose fitting rigid holster, it is very easy to modify the pattern of the holster itself. Since it is not permanently attached to the back flap, it is very easy to change. Please note that I have made a heavy cardboard template uh, for the parts I'm going to cut for this holster. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I am planning to make many of these holsters. So I will place it now on my leather, which uh, happens to be some good quality eight to nine ounce tooling cowhide. And I will very carefully with my awl trace around the outer perimeter. And this is just one of several parts that we will be cutting. So make sure that you get all of the marks on the pattern that you will be need to do, to do punching on later. Next we will mark the uh, part that will become the back flap and the belt loop. This is also cut from eight to nine ounce leather. And for this style holster we'll also have a fairly heavy weight lining. So we will not cut those at this time. We'll cut those later and they will then have a, will be cut uh, oversize and then we will trim them later. Now please note that I am marking all of the holes that we're going to need to punch later. The third part we will cut is the hold down strap and uh, this one we're also cutting from eight to nine ounce leather. This one however will not have a lining but it's very important that we mark all of the holes that we will be punching. Next, with the sharp knife of your choice, we'll now cut out our parts. And uh, I prefer to use a head knife, especially when I'm cutting on curves, as you see me doing here. Important also is the cutting board. I prefer the professional cutting board because it's very good. It does not impede the path of the knife and it will last for many, many years. Now that we have all of our pieces cut, if you're going to do any tooling, now is the time to do it.
after uh, my leather has dried, I'm going to apply some tan highlight finish. And I'll do this to all of the parts. Rub it in well. And at this point in time, you can apply any kind of a finish that you would like. I like the highlight finish, as you can tell. Gives it a nice, rich, even color. After applying it with the sponge, I like to take a paper towel and, and rub. Take any excess off onto the towel. You can always come back and add some more finish to even it up. And we'll put this aside to dry. And do the other parts. After our finish has dried, uh, we need to do a little scribing on the two back edges of the holster. That would be this edge and this edge. We do not scribe the top and the bottom. So we will scribe about a half inch off of, of this and sky was about halfway down. And we'll do that to the other edge as well. Next, I will prepare to stitch along the top and the bottom of my holster because we will be stitching a lining in place. So I'll take a wing divider and mark where my stitch line will be. I'll do this both top and bottom. Next, I will use a stitching punch and I'm going to punch uh, holes in here not necessarily all the way through but I'm just marking so that uh, after I glue my lining in place I can come back and push through with a stitching awl. After I do the top, I will do the same thing to the bottom. Next, I will use a good quality contact cement to cement the lining to the back side of the holster. And I will put a very liberal amount of this cement on both the back of the holster and the back of the lining. Now in this case the lining is cut from about a four to five ounce vegetable tanned cowhide. This will make the holster very rigid. If you're making a fast draw holster, it needs to be rigid, so don't be tempted to use something that's not as heavy and as firm. Now, if you're using like a six to seven ounce for the outside, if, if you recall, we used an eight to nine ounce. If you use a six to seven ounce, then you would want to use 
a six to seven ounce lining. We need to get plenty of heft to this. You will notice that my uh, lining piece is cut over size because after we have this cemented in place, then we will trim it. So we will make sure that we get a thorough coat of this contact cement on the back side of our lining. Uh, please note I have two marks on my lining and so what I'm going to do is sort of fold this at those marks and fold it in half as you can see. Now I will take that and set it in place Remember now my piece is oversized right about in the center, as you can see. Now I will roll up, I will roll up one side as you see me doing here and stick it. And then I will roll up the other side and stick it as well, making sure that all of the leather is down in inside of the holster. Now we will rub this well, make sure we get a good bond. Now this way we will not get a pucker inside of here. So now we can sit this aside and let it dry, preferably overnight. Next, we are going to apply a lining to the back flap now. This is a little different than your normal holster where the back flap is part of the holster itself. In this case, our uh, the holster will be free of the back flap, so we will make this part separately. First thing we have to remember is that it will fold about right here, uh, and it will fold back. I know this by the marks I have here where it will be attached. So we will make a mark here with our pencil about where that fold is. And that's mainly so we can mark it on the back and we'll mark the fold right there. Now we can apply contact cement to the back of the back flap and the back side of the, of the lining piece. Now the lining in this case is also a piece of four to five ounce vegetable tanned leather because we want this back flap to be very, very rigid as well. 